Hey, Foot Clan, we have an absolutely great show for you today. Not only do we continue Jason's Boom Boom Kicker saga at the end of the show, but we got fantasy matchups. We got a lot of news to talk about, including some updates for tonight's game and a whole lot more, including Never Not Working. So make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment, and enjoy. Today's show is sponsored by Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology. Regular use of Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield provides a continuous invisible shield of protection against dandruff, itch, and dryness, renewing your protection with every wash. Get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working with Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology available at walmart.com. We also want to thank Trade for supporting today's show. Does your at-home coffee not live up to your expectations? Well, Trade can change that we get everything delivered to our houses these days why should coffee be any different let trade bring the best coffee right to your front door their goal is to make every cup of coffee your best ever and the journey to your perfect cup starts with taking their coffee quiz you use a french press automatic drip cold brew no problem your answers will allow trade to pair you with the perfect coffee to fit your taste trade will match you to coffees you'll love from 400-plus coffee crafters in America. Uh, they will send you a freshly roasted bag as often as you'd like. For our listeners right now, Trade is offering your first bag free and $5 off your bundle at checkout. To get yours, go to drinktrade.com footballers and use the promo code footballers. Take the quiz to start your journey to the perfect cup. That's drinktrade.com footballers, promo code footballers, for your first bag free and five dollars off your bundle. Enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's football time. Classic. <laughs> it's, it's not classic if you finish it with the word classic. I, I know. It's an update. It's like uh, Coca-Cola classic. Where you have to say the classic yep. you're saying? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a good rebuttal. That's strong. <laughs> that was quick. Welcome into the show. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the fantasy footballers. Goes down smooth. <laughs> Coca-Cola classic. Not new Coke. New Coke didn't go down smooth. Oh, apparently not. I wasn't really around for that. When, yeah, when was that? Like early 80s? I was around for a crystal clear Pepsi, though. Oh, man, that was that was the best Pepsi. But I don't remember tasting it. I just remember thinking it was the coolest thing. It tasted like regular Pepsi. Did it? But you yeah. couldn't. But why there didn't was, it catch on? Because there was just a disconnect of your brain of... It was, it was just... It was a fad. People don't always... I don't know if you know this. They don't always like change. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like oh, you watch. I liked it how it was. That's why we prescribed a touchdown only leagues. <laughs> Just kidding. And kickers. Oof. And defenses. Oof. Oh, no, I, li I like a defense. Yeah. It's fun. And no PPR, right? Standard. Oh, yeah. That's why in my home league, no matter what I do and whatever arguments I bring, oh, we're, no. we're capped to 35 moves a year. Oh, my goodness. Oh, You're capped? Yes, you sir. can only have so much fun this year, boys. <laughs> <laughs> so do you uh, do you come up against the cap then? Oh, I'm the only one every year. Yeah, like halfway. Wait, through so this is this an is a anti rule. Brooks rule. It, it feels like it. Yeah, this is like he's too good at. He's always making these waiver pickups and all these great decisions over there. I'm lazy. Let's cap it to my limit. <laughs> That's awful. Well, when uh, the pandemic and all that happened and COVID came up, we upped it from 30 to 35. Oh, so. oh, so there was movement oh, in the league. Yeah. How generous. And then this year we stayed at 35. <sighs> so that's cool. It's like, <laughs> I mean, like, at least they're on blast now to hundreds of thousands of people. You know, it's similar of the NFL. They used to be ridiculous with the IR rules. Mm -hmm. It was one player. One player can go on your IR and that guy can come back. And what's great, and, and not only that, but the pra hurt. practice squad rules, the yes. the, and then they change it. They they make it less restrictive. And then every single team universally, 
all the players, all the coaches, they're like, oh, this is way better. Let's keep this. I've got an idea. <laughs> Let's, why don't you go even further and just say your injured players can come back? What about that? What right? about what about just let them heal like as when, long as they need? And then if you put them on the IR, there's just no rules. When they're healthy, they can play. And when they're, when they're not healthy, they, they can be on IR. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Logical. Uh, I don't know why people can't change. I think it's because we romanticize the past and everything that you've, you know, I have fun playing fantasy football in the past, and it was this way with the rules, so we can't change. I don't, that must be part of it. Um, That's why I'm on my dial-up modem. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Living the dream. Six. Living yeah, that living. dream. Uh, never not working. News and notes. The fantasy forecast starts of the week and the next part of the saga, the boom, boom kicker saga. Oh, yes. So the anticipation we, is building. We were uh, last time. He had to go. The boom, boom kicker. I might have taken a number three on a megalodon and oh, we're, we're going to see that if he's happy right about there. that. Let me get to something far more sophisticated. Let me let the listeners out there know that they can get a Muth is Luth shirt right now at shopballers.com. It's some of our best work. The Muth <laughs> is Luth, and it can be <laughs> so Luth from from small, medium, oh, large, gosh. extra large. So this is on a shirt XL. now? Yeah, it's on a shirt. That's great. And I believe by the time people listen to this show, or very soon after, there will also be a Dinner Butter shirt. I I walked through the halls oh, of our – Oh, fantastic. I, I, check, I checked on the team – and um, they're doing good work, and we have a dinner butter shirt that will hit the the website very soon. I I walked up on Schneider, who's one he's one of our dev guys. He does a bunch of our graphics. He was designing this wonderful guy. It was he was designing this shirt, and I asked him. I said, "Are your parents proud of what you do?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he yeah. couldn't say yes. <laughs> it's because his parents don't understand what he does. It's like when we described our jobs as, I'm on the radio <laughs> yes. for five years. Um, but shopballers.com, if you want to check that shirt out, it is, uh, it's delightful. I ordered myself one. Uh, Twitter, at the FF Ballers. You can follow us over there. Follow Jason right now, at Jason FFL, Mike, at FF Hitman. I'm at Andy Holloway. Let's get it going. Never Not Working. Presented by Head & Shoulders, Scalp Shield Technology. Available at Walmart. All right. We say it every week, all great fantasy players. you got to work a little harder. you got to dig a little deeper to guarantee success in fantasy football. And um, today on Never Not Working, it's a bit of a tease for some episodes we do as the year comes to a close. So as the fantasy season ends, Every year we do the truth episodes where we dig a little deeper on those shows and we go through every player and we say, okay, this player finished at number one or number two or number three, but did they give you that performance every week? What's the consistency of that player? Did what they, is the truth? Were did, they Tyler Lockett? Right. Yeah. Did they help you? Is that you? what we're renaming it to? Yes. The Tyler Lockett <laughs> episodes. But he's back, man. That's true. He is. He is playing well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Better than DK Metcrap, there, am I right? <laughs> there are certain players who look great at the end of the year and did not actually help your team win games in a normal league. And so we look at that in a, in a series in the offseason, early offseason, right after uh, uh, you know the, the fantasy playoffs are over. Um, and the, uh, we always hear how valuable those are for people moving forward. And so, yeah, today's a little tease for that. Yeah, and those – shows are based on consistency metrics that we we've developed and you can go to the website the fantasyfootballers.com you can click a player profile you can see grades for consistency for example Jonathan Taylor is an A he hits a threshold of success that we define you know an arbitrary number that we look at as you know a uh, consistent it may surprise you yeah 88 Jonathan Taylor has been very good yeah he, he hits the threshold 88.2% of the time over the last 17 games. That's how we evaluate it, over a 17-game sample. On the other end of the spectrum, Mike Williams, he's a a D. He hits the threshold only 35% of the time. What happened? So so there are players, and those players inherently you feel the consistency or the inconsistency of. There are other players, and I, like I said, this is a tease, so I want to bring up a few names just looking at players right here, right now, because it may inform some of your decisions 
as the year comes to an end. Here's one for you. Josh Allen. He is the fantasy QB1 in terms of total fantasy points. But this season, he has only hit the back-to-back top 12 performance uh, threshold one time. So he is, even though... That's wild. Even though he's had multiple... I mean, we looked at this on Spotify Green Room yesterday. He has four number one overall weekly finishes, and he's still only gone back-to-back top 12 one time this year. Um, and you do have an upcoming schedule with Josh Allen that is a bit tough. You get New England, Tampa Bay, New England again in New England. Um, but then you get Atlanta for the fantasy title game. There are some interesting, uh, I think, Melvin Gordon, Daryl Henderson, Josh Jacobs. Depending on what you just inherently think about those players, here's mm-hmm. the truth. They've only busted one time based on those metrics. Right. Um, there are obvious consistent players. Cooper Cup, 11 out of 12 games were good. Six great games. Deontay Johnson, he's been nine-plus fantasy points in every game. But only two games inside the top 15. So he is a very solid, consistent wide receiver for your team as opposed to Jamar Chase, who set the world on fire to start the year. Still the wide receiver six, but he's only been good according to the consistency metrics, 42% of the time. Yeah, the last four games have really been disappointing for Jamar Chase. Where are you guys at, Jamar Chase, like moving forward? What do you make of, you know, a little bit of a surgence here by T. Higgins? Can can this off this particular offense, which has gone very run heavy with Joe Mixon, can they sustain multiple wide receivers like are you counting on him as a wide receiver one or have you uh recalculated and is jamar chase like a a two now for your team i I still see him as a one i'm i'm not worried about i think when they are able to run the ball and and, you know this last week might have been surprising against the steelers uh but they were they they clobbered him they were up super early time. and then they were able to run the ball and I, I don't think that's always going to be um, what they're going to be able to do with Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase's talent um, I still see him as a wide receiver one uh, redraft and, and certainly dynasty there is a I think a natural you know give and take here where Chase broke onto the scene big plays defenses change some things that they're doing he'll adjust because of his athleticism and ability and the team, you know, the volume, it's not there for Joe Burrow. And it seems like what we predicted was happening in Cincinnati, which was they were ramping it up, the volume. Mm-hmm. But but what came with it? Tons of mistakes from Joe Burrow, interceptions. Those things changed some of these games. Now they've reverted to, you know, a lower passing total, and he's taken what they give him, and T. Higgins has been more open than Jamar Chase. And so we'll see what happens there. But uh, just a little tease. Yeah, but you can go to the website and check out the consistency metrics for every single player. It does help you formulate the kind of the makeup of your roster. Sure. And you could look at this also going into drafts next year because this number is based on the last 17-game sample for the player and say, you know, split the difference on a couple of different players if you're comprising a team. You may not want all players with B or C consistency. Yeah, Foot Clan, if you don't utilize the weekly snapshot tool that's on our website, I use it almost every single day. It helps take a look at exactly this, the a visual representation of a player's consistency. Uh, once you're about three, four weeks into the season, it's a really helpful tool. It used to be called the consistency charts. Um, but if you go to the Foot Clan tab on our website – Look at the weekly snapshot tool. You can see every player at a position at a glance visually and their consistency. All right, get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working with Head & Shoulder Scalp Shield technology available at walmart.com. News and notes from around the league presented by Sleeper. Pretty significant news for tonight's matchup. Taysom Hill will start the game. At quarterback, Alvin Kamara is out, hmm. not going to play yet again. That sucks. Mark Ingram is back, and then Cedric Wilson is out, and we don't know how much work Amari Cooper will get, but he did travel. I was optimistic about the Saints for a minute. Um, 
Taysom Hill, I'm happy to see him start. I do think he is the uh, the better quarterback for this team, opens things up for fantasy a little bit more. However, with no Kamara, and the hope was that he would have you know that weapon back, and both tackles are also out for this game. Taysom Hill on a hurt foot with no Kamara and no starting tackles is a scary proposition. This morning, I was on Twitter answering a couple questions that um, were Taysom Hill related, and I recommended him. And then as the news came out that basically all these important pieces are gone, I am changing my expectation of what he's going to be able to do. He can obviously run. He could still have a good game, but I don't project him to have a great game now. Yeah, I, I am terrified of any... I think this is a situation where you need to wait and see what happens. You don't have Michael Thomas, who was a key cog in what made Taysom Hill, you know, uh, fantasy relevant. It wasn't just running the football. He doesn't have pass catching weapons. He doesn't have an outlet in Kamara to threaten the defense. There's plenty of reasons to be scared about this start. Certainly. And the Cowboys are a they're a a good defense, and they make plays. And they 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 make takeaways are a part of their game. Here's a a perfect example from my life. I have Jalen Hurts, who we're not sure if he's going to play this week. And I have Taysom Hill. He was in my lineup. I was just going to start him over Jalen Hurts. Now I am I am going to drop Taysom Hill for Tua and wait to see if I have Hurts because I, I don't think you're going to have a great fantasy performance. Yeah, I agree. And then on the other side, Omari Cooper may be the scariest potential start in this game because you yeah. don't know... You know, he's recovering from COVID. He had uh, what I'm assuming are post-COVID lingering symptoms because he was back in the building. You know, a lingering cough. You may have some uh, cardiovascular limitations if you're coming back from symptomatic disease. So is he 100%? Do you want to be caught, you know, benching him and then he has a nice game? It's The Saints are a great run defense, so you imagine Dak's going to need to do a lot through the air, but... The risk reward seems very scary. Amari Cooper or Van Jefferson against Jacksonville? Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper or Elijah Moore against the Philadelphia Eagles? Elijah. <laughs> These the, the truth is is I don't I don't love those questions because the truth is, is it's just like the real question is Amari Cooper Healthy or sick? Full sure. snaps or... Sp that's the real question. Because Amari Cooper, full snaps, is the answer to all those questions. Amari Cooper, half snaps, is not the answer to any of the questions. So I think the real thing is, is just like, is he healthy? And I don't know. That's the truth. I do not sure. know. Sure. I'm trying to find a player where you're like, I, the risk I, is worth it. Yes. Like, I am content taking the points from this player over inheriting the risk no, that I, Amari, I Cooper is the ha Amari Cooper is a halftime player. And the truth is is I don't I don't want the risk, so I guess I will go with the two other names that you brought up. Okay. Well then asking for a friend, Amari Cooper or Pat Fryermuth in the flex. <laughs> I will take Amari Cooper's All potential right, upside. Hold on one second. Okay. <laughs> Let me tell my friend. All right, some other news for you. Adam Schefter reporting Antonio Brown is going to miss at least the next two weeks. There, You're at the point now with Antonio Brown missing time in which he could have been placed on the three-week IR two different times. He was not placed on the IR. I don't know why. It makes no sense to me, but you're going to be without him. And so the words of Bruce Arians kind of saying, oh, we might get him back, we might get him back, have not matched the analysis of the injury which is like hey you can barely put weight on the injury i mean that's why they didn't put him on the ir is they just they misjudged this they thought they would get him back sooner yeah i guess that's fair uh deandre swift could miss multiple weeks according to espn's jeremy fowler with the shoulder injury that's tough but if if you've got jamal williams you will get a couple of weeks of uh bell cow workload yeah well, one for sure probably two Daryl Henderson did not take part in Wednesday's walkthrough. Neither did OBJ, uh, or I guess he was limited. They're both going to be available for Sunday's game, according to Sean McVay. All right. So um, it does make Sonny Michel a, a riskier proposition. 
Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins were both limited in practice Wednesday. They've both been tweeting in lots of ways that say they're back, if that makes oh, sense. Oh, have they? Yeah, DeAndre Hopkins went out and, and posted on Instagram. It was like, you can't be back if you never left or, you know, <laughs> something like that. Sure. Uh, oh, wide receivers. Yeah, so. <laughs> they are a special bunch. <laughs> <laughs> wide receivers are the Keenan Allen quote, oh. which we cannot possibly say on this show. Um, yeah, it was so outstanding. I mean, you just have to have some kind of mental makeup, a, a persona of belief in yourself yes. that is on another level. Yeah, yeah, it does seem to translate often to good wide receiver skills. Yeah. Um, Justin Fields returned to a limited practice. Dalton still received the bulk of the first team snaps, so it's it's tough. We talked a little bit about Darnell Mooney, the matchup with Arizona, the risks involved, not knowing the quarterback, but it, it'll probably be Dalton again. Pat Fryermuth did return to practice in full on Wednesday. That's great. Nice. He's still in the concussion protocol, but that means he will probably clear. Mm-hmm. Kadarius Tony and Sterling Shepard did not practice on Wednesday for the Giants, and so they are highly questionable. Devontae Parker did return to practice on Wednesday. There's a um, a window here for him to be activated. Will Fuller is going to miss at least a ninth game with a broken finger. Yeah, I mean, his season is, is over. He what was a waste a, of money. Yeah, he was an irrelevant signing for them who will be one and done. Um, it'll It'll be actually pretty interesting to see Mm -hmm. what his free agent market is at the end of the year. Like in Dynasty, what is Will Fuller? And that really is based on the temperature of GMs around the league. You have like 31 other people that are going to decide, is he a good Dynasty asset or not? Because I could see after an injury-riddled career, a good season on steroids, and then another injury season. Like, are you really going to go out and invest in him yep. in any kind of serious way? I, think, I, I, I think wouldn't. teams will. And and because he he did make a great like in his limited work this year he looked like he was going to make a difference on that team and the injury isn't one that's you know this is a broken broken finger yeah it, it came out there was the multiple fractures in the one finger it I, I don't know I don't have a gauge on his market right now but you know just just a projection do you think think he'll chase Watson maybe like just go take a super cheap deal. Uh, wherever yeah, but Watson that could ends be, up. That could be Miami. It could. Yeah, they I, might bring him back on a cheap yeah. deal. I I will say for Dynasty, like I I've I moved him. Like I traded Will Fuller and I traded a future first and I got Odell Beckham because I'm trying to I need somebody on the field. You right. know what I mean? So yeah, I don't yeah. blame anybody for moving on as opposed to you know, he's got to find a great destination. He's got to stay healthy. It's murky. It's a lot of problems. Melvin Gordon did not practice hip and shoulder. I'm not reading much into that right now because of the he fact. Was, he was knocked out of the game exactly. with the hip, and he came back. And it's Wednesday. Yep. Uh, Adrian Peterson was signed to the practice squad of the Seattle Seahawks. I tweeted this news with the gif of this kid that just keep, keeps pulling jersey after jersey off. Uh, yes, it was a good because, one. Because, I mean, Adrian Peterson is just grasping for any place in the NFL right now. Yeah, and Todd Gurley's still no job. <laughs> That is I mean, correct. Just what a, the world is a crazy place in the NFL. Todd Gurley two seasons ago was a hot, hot dynasty asset. Yes. Considered one of the best players in all of football. Well, three years ago, you yeah. would have gotten the world for him. Oh, I did. I mean, he's currently <laughs> 27 years old. Talk about that 30 year old it, running back threshold. He's and just, how old is Peterson? Uh, 48. <laughs> um all right 36 30 oh my gosh all right that was today's news and notes presented by sleeper the leader in breaking news alerts download sleeper join the breaking alerts channel faster than every other source and before we get into the fantasy forecast want to thank today's sponsor indochino yes we do fellas are you looking to upgrade that wardrobe you looking to suit up this holiday season Indochino, they have you co covered with a custom tailored suit made for your body. If you've ever experienced the suit off the rack, you're like, well, this one's good enough. Indochino makes fantastic suits made exclusively for you, and it's cheaper than you possibly thought. 
to get a suit that is made for your body. We all have Indochino suits. I went down to the showroom, and the fitting took, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. It was lickety split. It's done. And then just a short time later, a custom fit suit that fit me fantastic. I was, I'm looking sharp. I'm not bunching in the shoulders. Nope. No, this thing Way is... Way better than normal. And like I got to I customize the Finally whole... looked great, Mike. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate that. I customized a whole bunch of things uh, on the suit. Even, you know, I mean, you got the little monogram in there. What, what kind of pattern you want inside that jacket? Right. You want to be silly? Yeah, you, you can. Want, I went with the uh, the Galaxy uh, looking on the inside where it's just like a little, little flavor. A little flavor hidden in there for me. It's fantastic, and the best part, Indochino suits start at just four twenty nine, and shirts from $79 with all the customizations. Give yourself a custom closet revamp with Indochino, or give the gift of great style with an Indochino gift card. Get $50 off any purchase of three ninety nine or more by using promo code FOOTBALLERS at Indochino.com. That's $50 off a purchase of three ninety nine or more at I-N-D-O-C-H-I-N-O.com, promo code FOOTBALLERS. And Foot Clan, if you're looking for a special gift for someone this holiday season, like something that is truly unique and actually personal, we have a really great idea for you. At PaintYourLife.com, you can have an original painting by a world-class artist done by hand from any photo at an affordable price. We actually have used the service. Yes. We have a charcoal painting of the three of us. It's, yeah. It's so wild that someone can do this. Like, my brain could it, never do that. Artists are magical people. You send any picture, yourself, your children, a family, a special place, a cherished pet, and you combine the photos into one painting. With Paint Your Life's compilation portraits, you can bring the family members who never had the chance to meet together. Maybe have a nice family picture without ever having to gather for that horrible family <laughs> picture day uh. um choose from a team of world-class artists and you're going to go back and forth until every detail is perfect at paintyourlife.com there is no risk if you don't love the final painting your money is refunded guaranteed and right now as a limited time offer you get 20 percent off your painting that's right 20 percent off and free shipping to get the special offer text the word football to 64,000. That's football to 64,000. Text football to 64,000. Paint your life. Celebrate the moments that matter most. Fantasy Forecast. All right, the Thursday night preview for the game tonight was on yesterday's episode, so you can go back and listen to that breakdown, although a lot has been changing with the Alvin Kamara news. Tampa Bay, let's begin here. The 8-3 and three Buccaneers taking on the 5-6 and six Atlanta Falcons. The game's in Atlanta, but the DK Sportsbook line has the Buccaneers minus 11. Whew. The over-under, 50.5 points. That gives the Buccaneers 30, over 30 points uh, in the implied point total here. The Buccaneers beat the Falcons 48-25 to 25 in Week 2. That's a game in which Mike Evans and Rob Gronkowski each had two touchdowns. So. Um, you know, whether it's the DK sports book or your eyeballs, I don't think Atlanta can keep up. That's the plain and simple truth. I don't think they can do enough on offense. Core Daryl Patterson can't do enough all by himself, putting the team on his back to match what Tampa's going to be able to do on offense. So how, how crazy is it? Cause it's, it's right in front of my face. And I mean, you know, these things, but sometimes when you're getting a fresh look, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers only have three more victories than the Atlanta Falcons. What a what, yeah. what a crazy world. It's really surprising, but the the opponents that the Falcons have beat have been sure. Mm, I yeah, questionable. I totally get that. Um Tom Brady is obviously a great play, but he he has three games right now as a Buccaneer against the Falcons and all three games he has torched them. We're talking 399 yards and four touchdowns. Uh, 276 yards and five touchdowns. Like Tom Brady is is an awesome, awesome play. Leonard Fournette last week sucked all the fantasy value out of every other player on the team. Brady had a bad week. Evans, Godwin, bad weeks. Gronk was good, and it's full full go for every single yes, Buccaneer in this game. Um, really love the potential for them to be weak winners, and um. 
Yeah, Gronk Gronk looks like a really really strong start rest of the season. He's yes, been he extremely consistent. Um, obviously missed games due to injury, but when he's on the field, he's great. He's better than I, um, most other tight ends that you have out there. I have some fantasy regrets because I a couple weeks ago before trade deadlines, my gut told me go make a move, trade Kyle Pitts, get Rob Gronkowski. That'd be easy to do. Um, and I didn't do it. I didn't do it because I was, you know, the, the allure, right? The, the siren of Kyle Pitts the, got you. The siren of any young, explosive, athletic tight end is a – it's hard to turn away. Yes. Um, this is the world that people lived in with Evan Ingram for the most of most of their – Jermichael Finley or any of these guys. Yeah. You live in that place. But um, so on the other side, you know, speaking of Kyle Pitts – how how confident are you to play him? Kyle Kyle Pitts or Dallas Goddard against the Jets? I would oh, I'll go play Dallas Go Goddard. Yeah, I'll play Goddard in that situation. Kyle I, Pitts or TJ Hawkinson against the Minnesota Vikings? TJ Hawkinson. Yeah, I'm fine with Hawkinson there okay. too. I think the the thing with Pitts is I play him over every single touchdown only tight end option. So you're talking about the Hunter Henrys. You're talking about the David and Jokus or you know, anybody that you're looking at and saying they either get in the end zone or they give you zero. Right. Pitts is above all of them because Pitts can give you yardage and you know. I would I would completely agree with that, and the athleticism will come through. Uh, you know, we've seen it in the beginning of the year. Obviously, it's been bad, but um, that doesn't mean that it's going to stay horrific. However, just to illustrate how horrific it's been, the last five weeks he is the tight end twenty three. Yeah. Oof. Oh yeah, it's been really bad. Um, what six targets last week? Only caught two of them. The Matt Ryan is is failing. Mm -hmm. They don't have wide receivers to throw the ball to. They throw the least percentage to wide receivers, and it's destroying the potential. So hopefully Patterson being out there. Obviously he's in your lineup, but it's Patterson and it's Pitts, and it's don't mess with the wideouts. Yesterday I was looking at numbers of like total targets to the wide receiver position. The Falcons, it's like twelve or thirteen targets a game combined so you're not really there's not an opportunity to find there for them that's the truth there's not like oh i gotta get the guy well no the guy might have five targets yeah since the bye week the guy who's been actually by a decent margin the best is russell gage mm -hmm. he's had a couple of duds and a couple of okay games but to illustrate your point that six games played for him since the bye week his 17 game pace would be 685 yards 62 receptions. This is not... Yeah, you're not fighting for much, are you? No. I, yeah, Russell Gage, I th I think you can desperation flex Russell Gage, but you're looking for f five for 50, for, you know, six for 60-something uh, with, with a chance of a touchdown. If you want to chase a murky wide receiver room, go chase the Jets. They're yeah. in the top three in targeting sure. their wide receivers almost double the amount as the Falcons, so at least you can find some value there. Let's move on. The Cardinals, 9-2, and two, taking on the 4-7 and seven Chicago Bears in Chicago. The DK Sportsbook line, Cardinals minus 7.5, over-unders 44. The band should be back together. That does not. That line does not give the Chicago Bears many uh, projected points. No, 18.5, and, and you could have some rain in this game that could, you know, lower that over under maybe but I, I it's the same story as the Atlanta Tampa Bay game to me the Bears can't score enough points to keep up with Arizona the Bears put up 16 points on the Detroit Lions the Bears can't score enough points <laughs> to keep up so let's start on the Bears side then because the decisions are to be made there um David Montgomery yeah the discussed volume. them on buy sell it's just He's, He's in. probably in, yeah. Patterson or Montgomery, it's Patterson, Patterson. right? Patterson, yep. Um, Pollard I, or Montgomery? I would go Montgomery. I would also go Montgomery. Yeah, that makes sense. But it's Mooney and Montgomery? I, I think that that's basically it. Now, personally, I don't want to play Darnell Mooney this week. Um, it's... Light what about rain, boom shakalaka rules? Fifteen mile an hour winds. Yeah, you're in a, ignoring in a tough matchup. I I do recognize he has been on fire. Wide receiver four, wide receiver four, wide receiver four team um, are his last three weeks. So 
Uh-oh. I mean, does that mean it's wide receiver four D? Oh, maybe. <laughs> um, so I, I'm fine if you want to start him. Personally, I don't want to. You I don't. would rather look elsewhere. Mike, you got to give him some options. Let's put this to okay. the test. Go find uh, some players to throw Mooney up against because he has been on fire, like you said. All right, Darnell Mooney or Brandon Cooks against the Indianapolis Colts? Brandon Cooks. Darnell Mooney or Devontae Smith against the Jets? Devontae Smith. Darnell Mooney or tonight, uh, Michael Gallup? That's a good one. That's a really good one. Oh, man. I think I would stay in the flames there with, with Mooney. I am slightly more confident than you. I see the risks involved. I mean, the, the quarterback situation, the Cardinals are fifth against opposing wide receivers over the last six weeks. They're a good secondary. If you only have to focus on one wide receiver, there's a lot that they can do there. I do know that they're going to target Mooney a ton. Darnell Mooney or yeah. T.Y. Houston? <laughs> if I would play Mooney. Mooney. Like, I get the hesitation in wanting to play him. The, the The situation is not the best at the quarterback position, but Darnell Mooney is morphing into a – He's he is a true wide receiver one. Like he's seen twenty seven percent of the Chicago Bears targets. Now they're you know, they're not gonna score as much. I I totally understand that, but he is the guy on this team. Cole Komet didn't practice today. We'll see if he can get on the field. Uh if not, that's just I mean, more reason to force a target to Darnell Mooney, and he's he's the guy that can make a, a fantasy season or a fantasy week in just two targets. So you combine that with the the target volume he's getting I I play Mooney just every week. Mooney right or Metcalf. Now. Oh my goodness. It's funny because Mooney is in that category where when a player emerges later, you've got him with your already stalwarts yes. on the on the roster. I've had people texting me about Mooney this week. I do I, I think the targets are what you lean on, but it's hard to play him over Metcalf, isn't it? Oh, that's extremely difficult. Uh just get because you you have more history of Metcalf having success, and now it's just a couple of a uh, bad game. Like we highlighted, this this three game stretch here for DK Metcalf is the worst of his career. Uh, but I I think I'll still. Oh my gosh! No, I'm gonna play Mooney. I'm I'm not gonna let the DK Metcalf name cl uh, get in the way of what I think. I'm playing Mooney. On the other side of the ball, Kyler Murray, if he's back. He plays. Yep. And you play him. Uh, if he's back, he plays. Yeah, that's really good analysis there. <laughs> mm, if he see. plays, he plays. Is that what I just said out loud? <laughs> if he dies, he dies. <laughs> <laughs> James Conner. Um, he's all alone. Chase Edmonds will be back in week 14. Uh, was that the truth uh, yeah, the, alert there? That yeah, it, a little delayed. And the computer the computer was. I mean, it worked, for, work. it worked for James Conner. So if Hopkins would be nice if he was back out there. I expect him to be. And back into fantasy lineups. And I, I would, expecting him to be back, I would play Hopkins over the DK Metcalf, over the Mooney first week off of the injury. And Zach Ertz, I think he's solid. Um, he is, he's very important to this offense. You know, out here in Arizona, Max Williams, if you remember, he had a big impact on this team. It changes what Kyler can do. And we've only seen Kyler and Zach together for, what, one game? And, and it was a good one. Or maybe two. I think we maybe got we got one game and then we got the Packer game. But Ertz is important to this offense. I think he might even be there long term. I think they might reach a deal with him this off season. But um, he's a low end tight end one. Does Hopkins put AJ Green and Christian Kirk back and play for you? Where it, it seems that they had more success when Hopkins was actually on the field. Now, yeah. I, granted, that really. that all times up with you know Colt McCoy. Uh, as the quarterback as well, so that it's, you, it's hard to filter out the uh, the noise there. Yeah, I, I was looking at some numbers yesterday. AJ Green is like has the second highest number of like like big plays percentage wise of all of his catches, like da twenty plus yard catches. That's what it was. It was what percentage of the receptions are twenty plus yards down the field? I think Mooney was like number one or something, and and um, that might be wrong, but AJ Green's up there. So like. The Bears have given up a lot of big plays. They give up 30 points a game to the fantasy wide receiver position. So I guess the question is more, if you pick another one, do you pick Kirk? Do you pick Green? I'd you'd, probably go Green. Yeah, you'd pick A.J. Green. All right. Uh, move on. Let's do it. 
the Chargers, six and five, Bengals seven and four. Games in Cincinnati. The DK Sportsbook line is Bengals minus three. The over under is fifty and a half points. These are teams that are opposite in terms of the pace of play. The Chargers, they play fast. The Cincinnati Bengals, they play slow. 30th in neutral pace. They run the ball. Mixon has seen 30 and 28 carries the last two weeks. It's equated to success for the Bengals. So they're not just doing it. They're doing it, and they're winning because of it. He's playing so well, and this matchup is great the, for him. Uh, mm -hmm. The Chargers have always been a run-funnel defense where – they're difficult to pass on and easy to run on. It it lines up great for Joe Mixon. So Joe is always in. Jamar Chase, you probably are you're, you're keeping him in your lineup. Yes. Jamar Chase or Darnell Mooney. Jamar Chase. Jamar. Um, okay, just bringing it up. The second, no, no, I, I the think, secondary for the Chargers is very good. I think it is uh, like on the surface that it seems egregious, but it really is not. You. We need to like recalculate some things like Mike Williams. What I are you playing Mike Williams or Darnell Mooney? Because I'm playing Mooney. Darnell Mooney. Mooney, yeah. I I think the bigger question is do people chase T. Higgins here? I don't think it you should. I don't think you should chase uh <laughs> Chase. Hey I don't think that you should no, I I'd love to be trolled on Twitter a second straight week for T. Higgins, but um the yardage totals for Joe Burrow are very low right now. The secondary for the Chargers is very good. They only give up 23 points a game. I don't know if I would do it, but I might stand alone on that. Yeah, the the matchup is the problem here. I actually, I have been more pro T. Higgins, um, I think, than, than you two guys. He's been pretty good. Like, I know he hasn't had the touchdown. And we talk about his fantasy finish not having these big, great performances. And obviously – the previous week to his nuclear week was where he was two for 15. So it was like you had the bye week. He came back, was uninvolved. It's like, oh, I'm done with T. Higgins. But he's a good player. Obviously, we saw that with 114 yards and a touchdown last week. But his three previous games, seven for 62 is a good game. Four for 97 is a good game. Six for 78 is a good game. He's involved. Um, he's a fine play in most weeks. Now, this week, they are favored against a bad pass D, a good – or a bad run D, a good pass D. So I don't think it's the perfect game script for him. I'm still willing to flex him in, um, but I'm I'm not expecting a, a great game. Herbert, quarterback five on the week for us. Um, no quarterback, according to Pro Football Focus, has a higher drop rate over expect over expected than Herbert. So 29 drops by his wide receivers. There was this stuff yesterday about, you know, does he throw the ball too hard? And Keenan Allen came out and said, if you think he throws the ball too hard, get on a jugs machine, learn <laughs> to catch it, throw me that ball every play. Um, I'd like you to throw Keenan Allen the ball in the end zone, please. Impossible. <laughs> uh, the last five weeks, Keenan Allen has seen double-digit targets. Allen, Eckler, Herbert. You know, Jared Cook is always a dart throw at the tight end position. And I think that this week with the matchup, the Bengals have been really kind of struggling against tight ends over the last six weeks. I think you can take a shot there, especially DFS and stuff. I, I think he's the he's the best value dart throw tight end in DFS. In Jared Cook? Jared Cook. Okay. So you can go Cook by the book. I would, I would say it's Foster Moreau, but. That's fair. Um. Mike Williams, though, is is the biggest risk right now because he went from, hey, is he going to win your league with where you got him? And uh, now he's got one good finish in the last six weeks, 72, 77, 41, 47, 10, and then 50. But it's all changed. It's absurd. So, it is absurd. What, what it, There is a conspiracy really? at this point. Against him? It, it or by to. him? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, at the end, he could be the mastermind. I don't know. I do want to point something out because we talked about it two weeks ago when Justin Herbert finished quarterback one on the week. Last week he was the quarterback six, and maybe you watched the game and you said, well, it didn't seem that way. It did not. But guess what? He ran the football again. Right. Four for 36 last week, which doesn't seem like a lot, but 36 yards, that's a, that's a lot. The week before was the nine for 90. You saw a few more designed runs. It unlocks the offense a little bit, and we said, boy, if he does that, it changes the floor 
and you get that beautiful ceiling that Justin Herbert always offers. Yeah, I think Herbert is a fine play. I, I He was almost my start of the week this week. I have no issue plugging him in my lineup at all, even if you're not sure whether Mike Williams will have a good game or not. Um, he's in, and, and he gets so much from Austin Eckler in the, in the receiving game. Um, yeah, who would you rather have, Austin Eckler or, or, or Joe Mixon? In this game, it'd be, yeah. it'd be the uh, – I'll, I'll stay with Joe Mixon. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I'll go mix them. The Minnesota Vikings at 5-6 and six take on the Detroit Lions. Oh, 10 and 1. The DK Sportsbook line, Vikings minus 7 on the road. Over-under is 47 points. You know, the Vikings, there's been a lot of the chatter, let Kirk cook, because without Dalvin Cook, it might be time to let Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen lead this offense. So, Madison is a very good back. He is not the same as Dalvin Cook and what he represents for the offense. Correct. Uh, he's a great start this week, no question about it. But I, I am curious to see if, you know, Kirk Cousins becomes more stable for fantasy players and if it becomes something where, look, he's been top 10 three out of the last four weeks. He has Detroit, then he has Pittsburgh, Chicago. So the playoff, Chicago, the Rams, the Packers, not the best. But um, Justin Jefferson makes you pretty darn good. Yeah, over the last two years, Kirk Cousins has uh, four full games without Dalvin Cook, and he has averaged six more fantasy points per game in those matchups. Mm. So I, I I really like Kirk Cousins this week. He's just been playing, he's been playing great for two years now. He's a he's a funny guy. Uh, because he you mean he, like when he lined up under guard? <laughs> That's exactly what I wanted to bring up of like how he's he has played he has played well this year uh and and he's played well for fantasy and then you have the the plays where the bone they're up they're up against it and he's scrambling to get the hurry up offense going and somehow he goes and lines up under the guard and then dalvin cook <laughs> has to run and tell him dude you're not under center like, he, and then they call a timeout he didn't notice this is, himself <laughs> this is the same guy if you remember oh, do, yes. who it w was going down the field. They were almost. It was back right in, before halftime. This is back in Washington. And and they they got the ball down. The clock is running out, and you've got to go down and spike the ball to get the field goal in. And he goes down. And he snaps the ball. He takes a knee and runs the instead clock of spiking out. it. What an idiot! Do you remember the look on Pierre Garcon's face when that happened? Oh, oh man! Yeah, it was. I was that Garcon. It was Pierre Garçon that looked at him like, you are a, what are you doing? <laughs> you like that? Your brain is going too fast. All right. To the game, though. Kirk yep. Cousins, Madison, Jefferson, Thielen. They're all in. They're all in. I yep. mean, Detroit is a delight. It's a delight. And on top of that, the two games, you know, week three and week five, we saw where Madison replaced Dalvin Cook. 30-plus opportunities in both of those games. There will be. There have been tears in Detroit for years, tears for years, but this year seven one-score games that they've ended up 0-6 and one in. They do compete. It's everything I thought I'd see with Dan Campbell's team. You don't have the personnel you need, but they do fight and they do compete. Jared Goff, DeAndre Swift probably out. Jamal Williams, solid RB two this week. I think yes. that's the ceiling that you get with a full-time player on a bad team. Yep, that's right. You're gonna touch the ball 20 times and have enough fantasy points to be plugged in your lineup. Nothing special unless he shockingly gets touchdowns well, it's, I, it's up to the is the receptions like does the game plan still say stay somewhat similar where deandre swift was that's where he was destroying people was was in the air and jamal williams has that skill set so does he see five plus receptions in this game because if he does then he's a rock solid running back too here's where we get interesting on the show, because I think you should play Josh Reynolds. Ooh, week. me too. I, I was going to bring him up. I he, wanted to make one of these guys my start of the week. I could not do it. Right. But legally. Yeah. <laughs> they would have they would have come and removed me from this they chair. They would have hauled you off. Uh, but wagon. it's good. Let's, let's have this discussion, because the on the year, the Vikings are 31st best against fantasy wide receivers, and in the last six weeks, dead last. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, what Patrick Peterson is now on. Uh, not that he was much, but he's, I think, out. Is he? Yeah. And uh, I don't know if it was COVID, IR, or what. Take a look at the Patrick okay. Peterson situation. So it was already bad. But 
Josh Reynolds has a rapport with Jared yeah, Goff. Yeah, he's on the COVID list as of two days ago. Yeah, Jared Goff and Josh Reynolds, they played together. This was a tandem mm -hmm. in Los Angeles, and last week you saw... I totally forgot about that. Yeah, yeah I mean, this is last week you saw him on the field 88% of the time, five targets, had the big play. He's by far the best receiver they have. Yes, and Josh Reynolds... I think is a is a good receiver. He left to go sign somewhere to be out of the shadow of, you know, Cooper Cup and Robert Woods and then all of a sudden a big shadow comes over him and uh he leaves that team and now Wait, he got out of the shadow and then he Oh, and then he went right into another one of yeah. AJ Brown. Well, he, well, he had he, his spot. He went to play opposite AJ Brown. Yeah. And then Julio Jones shows up. Yes. He's like, "Dang, it." Um leaves that team. That's a quote. The, oh, yeah, definitely. And and the Titans right now are, the, are so, they kicking themselves that they they're let saying "dag nag it." <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, Josh Reynolds is is in Gee my lineup golly whiz. tomorrow. So is he in yours too, Andy? <laughs> Dang it! Yeah, he is not currently in mine. Oh, all right. Well, he might not be now. We'll find out. Yeah. Uh, T.J. Hawkinson. He is in mine now. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, yeah, you can play Hawkinson. The Giants at four and seven take on the five and seven Miami Dolphins. The DK Sportsbook line here, Dolphins minus four and a half, playing good football. The over-under is only 41 points in this game. So I think that is one of the storylines here. There was breaking news this morning that Freddie Kitchen says he expects Daniel Jones to play and start this game. Uh, Thank goodness. So Mike Glennon mm -hmm. on the bench again. Miami's won four straight games. They can make the playoffs. They play the Giants, then they have a bye, then they play the Jets, the Saints, the Titans, I think they can get in the playoffs here. Tua's playing well, averaging 20 fantasy points per game since returning from injury. You know, the 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 Dolphins and the Eagles are both teams that were in the Deshaun Watson picture. They're also probably still two teams that are in that picture. But, probably. But the Jalen Hurts, Tua, maybe the future, maybe not. Like, if you don't have to trade draft picks for a quarterback, if you don't have to trade draft picks and players for a quarterback – it does help your franchise if you found it. Mm -hmm. And Tua has come out and played well. I liked him in this game. Jalen Waddell is a must start right now. In fact, he has the second most receptions for a rookie wide receiver in the first 12 games of his career. That's wild. What, so, are, you, what are you doing with uh, Mike Kosicki? Because it feels like the the true this emergence of Waddle has... Uh, diminished? Put, put the brakes on the Kosicki. Do you remember when I said season? over the last five weeks that Kyle Pitts was the tight end 23. I do. Yeah, that, that just happened. Michael uh, Michael Gesicki, uh, as oh, I call him, is, you 20, formal. is the tight end 22. So he's not the been good. Yeah, I don't have a great deal of confidence. The Giants' defense has been really, really good. I think that's a, that, something that needs to be said here. Recently, they have been slowing people down. I mean, they won the game last week, right? That was supposed to be their strength coming into this season. In fact, them and the Washington football team were supposed to have good defenses, and they started the year not. But they have the personnel for it, and now they are they are playing well. This is not Seven a smash points. matchup. Seven points they gave up to Jalen Hurts last week. And the Should Philadelphia Eagles. Are you talking about Jalen Rager? Yeah. Yeah, well. Would well, you? maybe, maybe a, a good defense allows – Jalen Rager to be targeted. I think that might be a good defense. <laughs> that could be part of the plan. Would you play Mike Kosicki or uh, Logan Thomas if you just picked oh, him? Oh, Logan, Logan Thomas. Thomas. Okay. How dare you? I, I'm checking for the people. I'm upset. Uh, Saquon Barkley, I think you have to start him, but lower your expectations. I think you could play Kenny Galladay. No, you can't. No. You don't think so? I no. do not. No. The, that sentence has been part of our like the, kind of the, weekly routine. Okay. He's a disaster. Follow my logic here. The Dolphins, uh, they're, they're a fine enough defense, but they have given up a lot of points, 30 points per game over the last six weeks to the wide receiver position. You probably don't have Sterling Shepard and Kadarius Toney. You got Daniel Jones back. I don't know, man. It seems like he should be able to have a decent game here. I mean, he hasn't been able to. That's been the problem. I I was in your camp a few weeks ago when they played the nice matchup Raiders or the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who don't give it up on the ground and you, they do through the air and he was two targets. I no, mean, his floor is zero. Yeah, and Sterling Shepard, though, uh, we did have a tweet from yesterday saying uh, from a verified – from Tom Rock uh, new, underscore Newsday, Sterling Shepard looks like someone who is on track to play. 
And I would not play. Well, then would you play Shepard? I would play Sterling Shepard because those wide receiver points that you're taught that the Dolphins give up, it's from the slot. So, and that's where Shepard will will be playing. So I'd be willing to start him in a pinch. But okay. Kenny Galladay, no. Something's just not right with that connection so yeah. far. And um, it's like you had a an elite wide receiver in fantasy. Just it's delete like, delete it. It's like Daniel Jones hates jazz. Maybe. I mean, maybe. Well, and, have, and you heard, contemporary. have you heard what Kenny G's been playing lately? <laughs> it's not the best jazz. This is what it sounds like. <laughs> Did you get to hear the sad Pity City drop as well? No. You didn't? Oh, you missed that part I of the show. That. Yeah, here you go. Oh, wait, no, this is the good one. We built this city. We're just playing drops now? Well, yeah, this is a fun time. Okay. I don't know where the bad one the is. The good one oh, that's sounds right. great. I love that. Don't you remember? <laughs> <laughs> we built this city. Mm, that is different. I think we're mesmerized that somebody decided to record... A version of that song. Well, because they that did, sad. They needed a song that they could play over the uh, the commercial where they're trying to raise money for the the animal shelters. Yes, yeah. this dog will die. Yeah. We build this city, and you're like, oh, oh, oh fine, <laughs> fine, Sarah, money. take all of my money. Yeah, that's right. All right, let's do our starts. Starts of the week. All right, well, I don't want you guys kick it off. All right, I'll jump in here with my quarterback start of the week. We're getting look, it's a crazy week for fantasy football with the bye weeks and who is available and I'm going with Derek Carr taking on the Washington football team. I am doing Send in the it. Car. Yes. Send in the car. I mean, tis the season, right? That's true. Uh well, die hard. Yeah. Good luck. Since week 2, Washington has only two games where they have not given up top 12 quarterback production Carr was great on thanksgiving against the dallas cowboys seems like deshaun jackson is integrating and becoming a uh that that one a, a one touch man uh f for the for the raiders and Carr's been he's been okay he has six top 12 performances that's as many as josh allen and aaron Rodgers. Okay. so i think he's i think he's in play here against washington i'm gonna go with tom brady Tom Brady. I, I would like to play Tom Brady over Derek Carr, just for the record. Yes, I, I realize this is not the most <laughs> uh, surprising start of the week. Uh, he's played Atlanta. Jason brought it up three times, averaged 355 passing yards per game, 3.7 passing touchdowns. They have the highest implied point total of the week. I think for context, do you hear you're saying like you'll play Tom Brady over essentially everybody I'm this playing week. him over I, we did, <laughs> joked about this yesterday but I have him and Josh Allen in my dynasty league I'm playing him over Josh Allen there and you, you get to face him in league of record thank you mm. thank, and, and who has him there uh that would be me yeah yeah uh Pre better you get to pre-brag I'll brag after the game my start of the week this week is Kirk Cousins talked about it he's better uh in the few games without Dalvin Cook um Alex, Alexander Madison is going to get his, but Cousins will be a great quarterback one this week. He's been great against the Lions. Career at Ford Field in Detroit averages 324 passing yards, 2.8 touchdowns per game there. Uh, you know, Andy Dalton was a quarterback one last week against the mm. the Lions. I yeah. rest my case. <laughs> <laughs> Exhibit A. Uh, my, my running back start of the week. Uh, one I didn't think I would go with all year, but here we are. Miles Gaskin is the gas man actually heating up running back nine and back to back weeks and the giants, while they're a fine defense, they have been very generous to the running back position, giving up top 12 production to the running back position for four straight weeks and eight of 11 games. They're allowing the second highest stars before contact, which is something that miles Gaskin could, could really use. And he's their goal line guy. Like he he should have an opportunity or two to punch in a touchdown. He is the second worst yards per touch in the entire NFL this year. Oh, if if Miles but he, Gaskin, he has found a way recently. If he's on your dynasty team, you need to bail out, bail out. I he's getting replaced next year for sure. It does seem likely. I will go with Alexander Madison. Alexander Detroit is not Madison. ready. He was a top ten <laughs> running back in two starts. 
filling in for Dalvin this year, 34 opportunities and 32 opportunities. Yes, sir. Um, even if they let Kirk cook, it's going to be 20-plus opportunities for Alexander Madison against a vulnerable run defense. Part of the cooking is checking the ball down to Alexander Madison because That's right. he did that eight times and seven times. Yep. Yep. Uh, this week, I'm going Clyde Edwards-Alaire oh against Denver. Uh, before the bye, he, he had 14 opportunities, scored a rushing touchdown against Dallas. He finishes the running back 11 on the week. He was eased back, but he could have 18 opportunities this week against Denver. And the Broncos are allowing the fourth highest uh, rush success rate and the eighth highest expected points per rush attempt. This is a game where the Chiefs are heavily favored. Um, I have him ranked pretty high. I've got him as my running back 15 this week. I think he's a solid play um, this week against Denver. Am I a wide receiver start? I, I like a bounce back here for Devontae Smith uh, from the Philadelphia Eagles. I like to hear that. Look, uh, the aside from the Houston blip, the, the New York Jets are giving up top 12 wide receiver production, or they have in in five straight weeks. Jalen Hurts will be better, and I the pie is smaller here, but Devontae Smith, uh, he's going to be hungry this week. And look, I, maybe Hurts learned his lesson. Don't throw the ball to Jalen Rager. Oh, my gosh. Only throw the ball to Mr. Smith, and you'll have success. All right. Uh, Chris Goblin. He's, <laughs> he's my start of the week. Um, he's been a disappointment lately. Two single-digit games in the last three but the Falcons are the salve. They're allowing the eighth most fancy points to opposing wide receiver. Salvkins? No, Mike. Okay. No, all right. No, all right. No. Okay. Don't interrupt my start of the week with something like that. <laughs> I thought it was okay. A two, no, they're not. Brooks um, laughed. Brooks laughs at everything. So? He's contractually obligated. <laughs> um, six straight games. Chris Godwin has scored a touchdown against the Falcons. Back to dating back to 2018. Um, his averages against them, 98 receiving yards, 1.5 touchdowns, uh, 21 fantasy points per game. Back on track for Chris Godwin this week. Uh, wide receiver, I'm going Chase Claypool. Oh, uh, yeah. My start of the Let's week. Go. I, I love him on this week. He is about to blow up, and I don't want to have him on my bench when he does. He has eight end zone targets and only one receiving touchdown this year. If you look at the list of guys with eight receiving uh, end zone targets, they all have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten touchdowns, and Claypool's sitting there with one. Oh, that's the big Ben. He's on the field for 100% of snaps the last two weeks, nine targets, 93 yards, eight targets, 82 yards, and the Baltimore Ravens are giving up big bomb plays all the time. That's true. 51 plays of 20-plus yards this year. That is the most in the NFL. They're giving uh, up the most passing yards per game of any team. Yeah, so Claypool is in my lineup. And my tight end start of the week, it's Logan Thomas. The Raiders are giving up the second most points per game to the position, and he is necessary right off of the IR, 81% of the snaps, the almost touchdown there at the end of the game. Uh, he's just he's a second-half league-winning type of uh, a player right? that was available off, off your waiver wire. Could still be there, and you can just pick him up and put him in, play him to the end of the season. My tight end start of the week, put, it the, put the shirt on. The Muth is Luth. Pat Fryer Muth is my start of the week, the number one rookie tight end in fantasy football. Um, Baltimore stinks against the tight end position. Teams know it. Um, Pat Fryer Muth staying in the flames right here. Very necessary. No Eric Ebron. Um, I think he's going to take the most advantage of this defense. I love Pat Fryer Muth. Um, I'm going to go with Dallas Goddard. I know he's been inconsistent, and he hasn't been all that great. Uh, lately, but he's on the field 97%, 95% of snaps the last two weeks, and the Jets are a great matchup. They're allowing the second most expected points per pass attempt, the second most yards per play in the NFL. Uh, Goddard is important to the offense. I think the matchup is good for him. He's on the field. Eventually, it will come through. I would much rather play Dallas Goddard over the middling, basement-dwelling uh, tight ends this week. Is that it? Yeah, we did we do we, it? we made it. All right. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% guaranteed boom boom kicker of the week. A dumpy mega snapped at my head and death was soon close if 
not for my friend, carried by wind, hang gliding with Greg Joseph. That was a close if Joseph rhyme. <laughs> it's not the easiest to <laughs> rhyme with Greg Joseph. It didn't hit like a rhyme. But I but yet I did it. So I felt it. So Greg Joseph <laughs> is here to help. That's right. He's hang gliding in. He's take he took me off the uh, snapping megalodon. So now is this I'm a, headed towards the land? I did like the dumpy mega snapped at my head up. Mm. Is These <laughs> sub rhymes that you're working in are they're fantastic, yeah. wonderful. Is this a hang gliding situation like the the one particular video we watched where it was uh, uh, the hang gliding went off and and the feller was actually not strapped in. And he, was, and he ended up that he's just dude just white knuckled hold on that for, was for the, actual life that was the craziest video no um i'm he came prepared he oh you, you're locked strapped in. strap me in okay thank you you don't you're because you're not andy greg. like you think you can uh, no 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 i know i can't for five so i just minutes. want to thank greg joseph <laughs> it's joseph, joseph. um oh for gosh. that hang glider we want to thank not just Greg Joseph, but pristineauction.com for supporting the show. Pat, Pat Fryermuth signed jersey, $65. That ends tonight. I just saw somebody picked up an Elijah Missile jersey oh, for like 50 God. bucks, autographed. Um, he is Pristine, also my start of the week. At pristineauction.com. Uh, he's going to have a great week. Use the registration code BALLERS. BALLERS. To get a $10 credit at pristineauction.com. Back with more matchups on tomorrow's episode of the show including Jason spinning the wheel of shame. Oh, that's right. It's been uh, a while. That's going to be a good time. Enjoy the football. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.